Rumors are flying all over the internet of the RTX 5000 series as the 40 series comes closer to the end of cycle. So we have some of the juiciest rumors out here and honestly, it looks pretty promising. Let's talk about it. Disclaimer for this video, even though we have direct contact with Nvidia, we still have no information on the new GPUs coming out. So keep in mind that everything we're talking about today is just straight rumors that are cycling over the internet. All right, let's first start off with dates. Um, we haven't gotten any announcements yet. So the rumor is as of right now that they'll be announcing it later this year. We're already into June, so we're probably looking at Q3. My guess would be September, October. Usually once they announce uh, the cards, it's usually about a three week to four week release time frame. We've seen kind of a back and forth with the 80 and 90 series. On the 3000 series, the, the 3080 came out first about a week before the 4090. Uh, on the 40 series, we saw the 4090 come out actually a pretty decent amount of time as far as difference uh, to the 4080. So the rumor is the five, the 5080 would be released out before the 5090. But again, we're not sure. It is all up in the air and rumors. We've seen some people on, on Twitter like Kimmy, he, they've talked about it as far as release times. They're pretty confident. They're saying it's not true. RTX 5080 should be released first. It's a pretty confident statement to say. Like I said, we work with NVIDIA directly and we have no information on this whatsoever, like I talked about before. Um, so it's pretty much just up in the air at this very moment and we'll see what happens. Looking at the rumors of the design of the 5000 series, there are rumors saying that this is gonna be a smaller card. That would be really cool actually, because the 49 when they released it, the Founders Edition was a thick boy. That thing was really thick, taking up quite a bit of slots, anywhere from three to four slots on a PC. Now with the new one, the rumor is it's only gonna be a two slotted card. Again, these are rumors. Again, we have Kimmy again saying no. RTX 5090 Founders Edition has a two slot cooler. Once again, pretty pretty confident statement there. Uh, if that's the case, it's gonna be pretty awesome uh, just because we had, we've had we had issues with the 4090s fitting in lots of cases, lots of builds. As a lot of you guys know, when the 40 series came out, a lot of manufacturer, case manufacturers came out with, they had to redesign a lot of cases just to have that GPU fit uh, with their cases. So it was pretty wild stuff. So hopefully if that's the case, we don't have that same issue again, because even with the Lee and Lee, 011, which at the time was very popular, it barely fit in that case. And then they had to release the Evo, which is a little bit wider to allow the new design of the, of the power connector to actually be able to fit and not bend too much. So with this new design, hopefully not only is it uh, not as thick, but also not as wide as well. So that way it allows more capabilities of actually fitting in possibly smaller builds. Um, as far as the actual uh, specs go, there's a lot of rumors flying all over the place. Uh, spec wise, I've seen anywhere from it's going to stay with 24 gigs of VRAM to 28 gigs to 32 to even possibly 36 gigs. As far as the actual RAM though, the GDDR7 is another big rumor that seems to be a very solidified rumor, which to me would make sense uh, just because we're jumping in generation and to have better performance as well. So memory bandwidth is something that's going to be a, a, a big factor when it comes to these new GPUs. So not only more VRAM, but also faster memory. So a lot of performance comes from that side of the GPU. All right, so as far as the CUDA cores go, uh, as you guys can see, again, rumors, they're saying it could be less than 24,576 CUDA cores versus the 16,000 that the 4090 had. Honestly, if it does release with, let's say even 21,000, uh, anywhere in the 20,000s, that's a pretty decent jump uh, over for the 4090. If you look back at the 4080, uh, 4080 was right around the nine to 10,000. A quarter core range versus the 4090 was at 16,000. And there's a, a decent jump in performance in, in some games, not in all games, but in some games there is. So if this has a jump over the 4090 by that much, just on the CUDA cores, the memory bandwidth as well, uh, the memory bus interface from uh, 384 to 512, again, rumors, or if that's the actual performance that we're gonna see spec wise, it's gonna be really nice to see that an actual real world performance. Now, as far as the actual wattage of this GPU, they are making it smaller. My guess is that if they're making a smaller, it might be more efficient as well. So hopefully that is the case. Uh, on the last 4090, the 40 series, we saw that it was anywhere from, I've seen my 4090 drop to 480 watts. Um, obviously the, the reference models, they, they, they're right around the 450 watts. After AIB partners like the Asus Strix, um, MSI Supreme X, any of those, they can go up to 500, 600 watts easily um, with the manufacturer just right out of the box. So hopefully with the new GPUs when they come out, they are more efficient and they make them smaller and we can get a lot more mini ITX or smaller builds so we don't have to get such a big case just to house these new GPUs in. 
All right, so as far as pricing goes, uh, as we saw the 4090 previously was the MSRP right around the 1599 price point. Hopefully it doesn't go any higher than that. Uh, even though the MSRP on the 4090 currently was 1599, we still see some GPUs surpassing that easily. It has stabilized a little bit. When these cards came out, there was still kind of like the shortage of GPUs. Uh, so they were, they were going up to like $2,200, $2,100. Hopefully we don't see that again. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk of AI with uh, a lot of the new GPUs coming out. And I will be quite frank, there. literally a lot of the meetings I've been in with all these events I've been going to, a lot of these companies such as AMD, Intel, Nvidia, it's been nonstop AI discussion. So we really hope that doesn't cause a shortage with these GPUs because I don't wanna see the 5090 upwards of 2,500 bucks uh, you know, on Newegg or Amazon. And then of course, we would have to also increase our prices, which we don't wanna do that. We wanna make sure we pass as much savings as possible to you all. So hopefully that doesn't affect anything. Hopefully the MSRP on it, I'm gonna say if it stays around the 1599 price point, I think we should be good. Um, but there are rumors that it might be a little bit more uh, just because of how much stuff they're putting, they're pretty much the performance that they're putting into these GPUs now. As I stated before, these are all rumors and they literally change day to day. So prime example, looking at this article here from videocards.com, May 29th and literally the very, very next day, the specs changed from the 32 gigs of VRAM down to 28, the memory bus from 512 down to 448. Again, these rumors are gonna be going, as we get closer to the launch day, it's just gonna be all over the place. So pretty much take everything you see with a grain of salt and kind of wait till Nvidia actually announces everything. I know I haven't talked too much about the 5080, but there's really good reason for that. The reason being is because the 5080 has very little rumors. Usually this is how it works. Uh, 5090 is usually the first one to launch uh, in comparison to the 40 series. I know the 30 series is a little different. Right now, as, as it stands with the rumors, uh, we're looking at 96 on the uh, streaming multiprocessing cores uh, versus 84 from the 4080. And then the memory bit interface is gonna be 256 as well. Again, rumors, and that's all we have really with the 5080. So if that's the case, we're probably gonna see a slight bump in performance from the 4080, uh, not quite a 4090 performance, but who knows? Again, rumors, this might change. Also with the VRAM itself, we have seen on online, again, all over the place, anything from 20 to 24 gigs of VRAM as well on the 5080, which if that's the case, that'd be a really nice contender uh, moving forward because a lot of games are using a lot more VRAM for sure. And lastly, uh, laptop GPUs, which honestly I'm not a fan of. Laptops, uh, when it comes to performance, they're usually about half in comparison to performance to the desktop version of that same series. There is a market for it and people just don't, can't carry a whole entire desktop with them at all times. So when it comes to the rumors of the RTX 5000 series laptops, uh, there is some bad news on there. They're saying that there is going to be, I think they're behind about two months on the actual release timeframe for the 5000 series. So we might be looking at a 2025 uh, release timeframe for the laptop variant of the 5000 series. They are still showing and promising that it's gonna have 16 gigs of the GDDR, GDDR7 VRAM, which is very good for a laptop. So 5090 rumored is gonna have about 16 gigs of VRAM, so possibly my guess would be about 12 gigs for the 5080 is what they're saying here. Again, all rumors, possibly even a variant of an eight gig version as well. Don't be too surprised if you hear about the announcement for the laptops and there's nothing around the corner until the 2025 timeframe. Possibly Q1, possibly Q2 as well. And as far as AMD GPUs, we haven't heard any rumors whatsoever, but I know AMD did mention that they're not targeting to they're not targeting to compete against the 4090. They're looking more of the entry mid-range level of GPUs. So hopefully we get some information soon from them. Uh, that way we have some competition between Nvidia and AMD. Lastly, if you guys are looking to get a 5000 series GPU, make sure you're following PowerGPU on all socials. We'll have uh, builds ready to go once they get released. You already know, the best place to buy a PC is from PowerGPU.com.